We're road tripping the USA for 30 days and so far we've road tripped through California, visited some of the best national parks in the US, broken down in Chicago and even ventured into Canada. But today we're back in the USA and we're visiting Maine. Today we're in Bangor, Maine to do all things Stephen King. It, excuse the pun, has been one of Jack's dreams to visit Bangor, Maine for years because he's a massive Stephen King fan and he's lined up a tour of 10 or 11 places that have inspired all of Stephen King's books and films. So the first stop on Jack's list is RM Flag, which is a shop, just a convenient it's, shop. It's a convenience store in Bangor, Maine. One of Stephen King's foremost antagonists in a few of his books is called Randall Flag. And as you can see, R.M Flag, five minutes from his house, it's obviously inspiration for his, his antagonist. Second place on the list is actually the graveyard where Pet Cemetery was originally filmed and the inspiration obviously for his book. And right now we're stood in front of the headstone with the name Carry On which inspired his very first published book, Carry. The third stop has brought us to the Kengaskog stream which is actually the inspiration behind the river in the book and it's in the first original movie of it and the remake of it. But the name in the book is actually the Barrens and it's where the kids play in the summer and build dams. It's also where the um, sewer pipe is but the kids go down to fight it at the end of the book. Fourth stop is the Bangor Public Library, which is very significant. Stephen King funds part of the library to keep it open, and it's actually in the It book. It's where Ben goes and spends most of his time because he's got no friends, and where Mike Hanlon gets stabbed in the book. Fifth stop is State Street Bridge, which actually is a busy highway looking out to this huge river. So this bridge was a massive inspiration for Adrian Mellon in the book, who is a gay character who gets thrown over into the river for being gay, and is when it is first introduced in the river. But in real life, in the 80s, a guy was actually thrown over by three people, and he couldn't swim, and he did drown in this river. Stop number six is a special one. It's the Beverly Marsh House but this isn't in the movie. Stop seven is this absolutely huge Paul Bunyan statue because Bangor actually used to be a logging town and in the film and in the book, it actually brings this alive to try and kill the characters. Number eight is this standpipe which holds about two million gallons of water and in the book, it's where Stanley actually goes in when that door's open right there and sees two ghost children. Both the children that are now ghosts in there did drown in that standpipe in the book and Stanley then later commits suicide because of what he's seen in there. So stop nine is on the corner of Jackson Street and Union Street but in the book it's Jackson Street and Witcham Street and this street is the confirmed location of the inspiration where Georgie dies in the book right in this grid right here. And the 10th and final stop before we head to Jack's gift shop, which is just a bookshop with Stephen King merchandise, is actually Stephen King's house. Now he still lives in Bangor, Maine, he does have a house in Florida too, but he just lives here in a normal neighborhood with a very modest house with one of the best authors in the world. Finally, we're at the Stephen King merchandise store where we're gonna go in and have a look at what there is. We've just seen books that were priced at like $100, $200 that Jack managed to get in Omaha for like $50. It was so, so lucky of him. And then there was one book in there that he didn't buy that he could have bought for $50. That was also about $200 here. So he really should have bought them all and just got a suitcase to fly them home. Now we're done with Jack's little Stephen King tour. We're gonna head to Boston. It's about three and a half hours away and we're going to a Boston Red Sox ball game. And we've arrived we're outside of Fenway Park. It's right here. This is our gate entrance. And we're about to go, we're a little bit late. We've missed kickoff. I don't know if they call it kickoff. First pitch, I think they call it. We've missed first pitch, but it lasts like three hours. So we should get plenty of baseball. The game that we're currently at, it would be Boston Red Sox versus the Kansas City Royals and Boston Red Sox are winning 4-2 to two, and there's not many innings left, there's like 3 or 4 innings left so it looks like Boston Red Sox might win this game
way forward to be that fun, but it was entertaining. And the Red Sox won 4 to 3. And in the end, I ended up getting better seats because I had a little walk around and seen loads of the seats in the front. So when I start, I didn't see someone snatch a baseball right next to me. You know what? $60 for like two and a half hours of a baseball game at one of the biggest teams in America, the Boston Red Sox. It was actually really worth it, it was a really good experience and I'd actually go to a baseball game again. What do you, what do you think, Andy? Did you enjoy it? It was a baseball game. Yeah. Really good though. I enjoyed Sorry, the like... swinging and the hitting of the ball. Nice. It's the next morning. Blue <laughs> It's the next morning now and we're currently sat in the car in a Walmart car park in Salem, which is a city just above Boston. and. We've got the engine running because Jack decided to leave the lights on all night. Uh, well, uh, so the battery allegedly, died. Allegedly, allegedly. And we, we had to get allegedly, a jump start by allegedly. some stranger. Luckily, he had like a jump start cable and was happy to help us. Allegedly. No, it was him. And the other day as well, he also reversed and so on. So that's, we've both done no, it now as so well. We're having a nightmare with this car. Anyway, today we're going to be looking around Salem at all the historic stuff about the witch trials because Obviously, Salem is famous for the Salem Witch Trials. Right now, we're in Salem's Witch Village and we're going to be doing a guided tour of three things. First, the Witch Village with an audio tour, then the Wax Museum and then a haunted house just for fun at the end. Now, the price of all this for all three was $26, which is really good because it's going to give us a few hours of entertainment. The first tour was an audio tour, giving us a brief history of the Salem Witch Trials where over 200 people were accused of being witches. It also explained the history of witchcraft and how it's been linked to medicine for thousands of years, such as witch doctors dating back to prehistoric times. And contrary to popular belief, witchcraft isn't evil. It's a peaceful practice that focuses on positive energy and how we're connected to all the elements around us. And that's why they wear the pentagram which is a symbol of the four elements and the soul being connected. We finished the audio tour and now we're going to be going into the Wax Museum. The Wax Museum went into much deeper detail about the Salem Witch Trials and how economic hardship in Salem during the time was the main reason that people were being blamed of witchcraft to blame them for the problems the town was facing. And the main instigators during it were teenage girls who led to dozens of people being tortured and 25 being killed. 19 were hung, one was pressed, and five died in custody. Now that we've finished the wax museum, we're going to be going in to the funnest one, which is the haunted house. Hello? No, he's just in the walls, isn't he? Oh, 
You don't know who you're messing with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe she no one got me. <laughs> you are like the most like timid person. Timid. Just like, scary. You just all the jump scares got you. So we went through, and I don't think me and Andy jumped at any of them. And Jack jumped at literally every single jump scare. And I don't think I got any of them on like camera because I was at the front. So timid. So all three tours all together maybe lasted just over an hour. It wasn't as long as I expected it to, but for $26, it wasn't too bad. And to see Jack get scared at every single thing in the haunted house was well worth it. Before we leave Salem, we decided to come to the beach to freshen up a bit, go on the water and play some American football. Just at the right time. It. <laughs> I, hope that, oh, I don't think the GoPro's on, it's got no battery. Oh, it is. I think the GoPro got that. I don't know if you got this, but Annie just fell over in uh, getting the ball out of the water. So, once again, we're sat in a Walmart car park in the car, and we don't know what to do. We've got two options, and we both, and I'm not both, all three of us keep saying, Oh, I'm not bothered, I'm easy. We, we take ages to sign. We're going to start flipping coins to decide what we're going to do. Crazy. <laughs> right, what are we saying? Heads for versus, tails to stay and sleep. Heads for versus. I think that looks like a heads to me. Yep, that is a head clear as day. Looks like we're going to versus, which is an adult arcade like the one we went to in Chicago. Really fun. Now, you're checking with the cash in, just five bucks, cash your car. After that, all the games are free. Um, we got dinner, kitchen's open for another about a half an hour, and a bar is open for about 11, boys. Okay, so that's good. Thank you. Cheers, mate. The games are unlimited. You order your food and drink from the bar, you can sit where you like. We're all set. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. Bye, guys. So a tour life's actually too small to play the racing game. He can't fit his uh, legs to the pedal. It's a bit of a more old school arcade with a lot of retro games and pinball machines but it does have a console behind the bar to play against other people and it has a few PvP games so with that in mind and the losses I conceded in Chicago it was time to get some revenge. in Boston was really fun. Five dollars and you get like unlimited games, you just have to buy drinks at the bar, but you don't even have to, we didn't.
but we're going back to the car now. We're gonna tour Boston in the morning, so we'll see you then. This part of the video is a little bit longer than I expected it to be, so I'm gonna cut it there and pick up next time. So make sure you smash that like button, comment below what your favorite part of the video was, and subscribe if you're not already. And as always, keep exploring.